Well, Jim, let's get a few more questions before we wrap things up here this week. This next one was sent to cornydrivethru at gmail.com from Adam Phillips, Evansville, Indiana. You're Evansville. Browns. That's right. Your story about Steve Austin and Ox Baker reminded me that around that time when I was growing up in Homa, Louisiana, Sable was actually booked to do a meet and greet at the mall there. Oh my God. The price was considerably more than my parents were willing to spend, but we went to the mall that day to catch a glimpse and watch. She wore an oversized sweater and sunglasses, and by all accounts did not seem very happy to have to meet the fans. <laughs> my question is, did you have anything to do with booking her appearance? And was there anybody you did book for an appearance who adamantly expressed this was something they did not want to do? Well, second question. First, no, they'd never come out and say that because at the time, Sable was making, this was 1997, 1998, right? Sable would make $5,000 to go sit somewhere. That was actually her personality. It wasn't that she was unhappy to be there. That was her person. She was probably over the moon that day. That's her personality. She'd sit there, sunglasses, nah. She didn't want to meet any wrestling fans. She didn't like wrestling. She was just trying to be a fucking TV star. But they never said, oh, I don't want to do that, because where else was that surgically enhanced bimbo going to make $5,000 for three hours? And there's a line there, but she wouldn't get that much money for three hours. So, you no, know, a lot of the guys appreciated the extra bookings on wrestling shows when they allowed that to third-party wrestling promoters where they'd get 500 or 750 or whatever, maybe. But with the exception of a few guys, you know, the Mick Foley's, um, who were always happy to go out and do that stuff and were generally personable, you know, some of the main event people that were getting a ridiculous amount of money just sit there at a mall and sign autographs, you know, it, well, it's like the modern day fan fest, and it sometimes guys are engaged and happy and want to, you know, mess around and talk to the fans, or whatever. And there's other people who are sitting there not looking up or on their phone or can't be bothered or whatever. It's, it's the same thing, but generally it was somebody like that who would never in ever in any other lifetime in any other universe ever make anywhere near that kind of money for that amount of time for that little work and they were miserable about it they were doing somebody a favor to go to the mall but i, I laughed at homa because i don't remember every bo ever booking anybody in homa if if somebody had said hey send somebody to homa i would have sent somebody that i didn't like I didn't know they had a mall in Homa. The only thing I ever saw was the Homa Rec Center, which was a giant mud field with a fucking uh, uh, brick building in it. And uh, that's where we nearly got killed on a regular basis every two weeks in Louisiana on a Sunday afternoon. All right. Well, this show won't be coming out on a Sunday afternoon. Let's get a few more questions away from Homa. Jim, this next one. Apparently was sent several times because his last email was a little angry. I just thought, I don't love Homa. I don't love Homa. And I'm, or a Soma. And if I, uh, I, oh boy. I love to sing about the moon and yeah. the June and spring. That's, that's easier. I'll work on the other. I don't know what you were singing the first yeah. time. 